What's up guys? Marcel here and welcome to Quadero episode 13, I think, or 14. I can't remember. Episode 14. Yes, guys. So today I'm with one of my closest friends, Paula and Henry, and we're going to talk about finance. But before we get into the good stuff, I would like to introduce you guys to my good friends. Guys, whoever wants to start, go ahead. Uh, my name is Henry. Um... Uh, I've been friends with Margella for a couple of years now. We've even been like co-workers. And mm-hmm. then, uh, yeah, and I guess we're talking about finance. And I guess you're next, Paula. My name is Paula. I've been friends with Margella for a couple of years now, too. Uh, we started uh, nursing school. And yeah, let's talk about whatever she wants to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about you guys. All right. I have a question, guys. Um, what made you interested in the world of finance? Is that even like uh, the right word? I know you guys, I, I've been to one of Henry's sessions, like educating me, and that was really fun. Um, you guys are training and are financial advisors, right? Can you tell me, us more about that? Yeah, that's correct. So um, I, I'm actually licensed. Um, I've been uh, interested in this field since I was probably in my 20s. Uh, mm-hmm. I got, into, I got to do it because um, my family needed a person to be a man because my dad unfortunately passed away. So I had all the responsibilities uh, and that's how I slowly got introduced to it. And then now since I'm independent and I, you know, got to worry about myself and that's, you know, that's the first step you got to do. So that's why I got into it. Mm-hmm. Adulthood. Adulthood. Yes, adulting. <laughs> sure. Right. How about you, Pao? you got a job. Uh, for me, uh, I was I think twenty eighteen when I when I actually opened my eye, uh, regarding like finance, like what I don't know about it, and actually a lot of us didn't know what finance or financial literacy was until I met uh, one of my friends and she he introduced me to a couple of people who were like really good at like uh financial advisors and stuff like that and how important it is to plan your future uh your debt your savings uh and not only savings like savings that's not growing you need like savings that's actually like you know growing uh, even a little bit Mm -hmm. because yeah so i'm gonna ask you guys like um what is finance exactly can you define it for us uh finance for you um, yeah for for me basically it's just um handling money man- management i guess management yeah mm-hmm. yeah there's so many things that i didn't know personally and then uh once everything was responsibility wise was on me i had to act fast but just if you were about properly ma- like uh what's it called properly taught i guess or educated um mm-hmm. things were a lot more smoother um things would have been in the right places, done at the right time, and just the flow of your money is, is so much more easier. But this is where I wish I had an advisor. Uh, <laughs> but uh, now I guess I'm one of myself, so let's get it. <laughs> yeah, and I agree with Paula when she said about for the future and stuff, and you know, like money isn't something that just grows on trees. You, you really work hard for it. and. Um, I guess are you guys the eldest? Are you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Me and I, I think you are too, right, Majella? So I, I, we're like, yeah. so I guess it's a very important subject for people who are the eldest sibling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, I yeah. So I really am open, like especially moving to Canada, right? Like you see, um, my parents didn't get the jobs that they used to have before in the Philippines, so it's a big change. We're not financially stable, so. Like you realize their sacrifices and all that. So it, it makes you value money and, and the way you handle it. So um, guys, like what is, I was wondering about financial freedom and financial security. What is the difference between those? Do you want to give it a shot, Paula? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 is, what does it mean for you, Paula? I don't know. What is, what is, how about financial freedom? What does that mean to you, Paula? Uh, financial freedom, money going for you. <laughs> Just kidding. Wait, no, I don't have a good definition for that because I feel like I'm still studying uh, about it and um, exploring uh, the financial world because I just literally just started my 
um, a road to being an advisor and to be able to hopefully help people in the future. So I think Henry would have a better definition for freedom. Yeah. So I guess freedom. freedom versus security, right? Um, healthcare would be technically security. We're, we're all, we'll always have a job. As uh, Margella, Paula, and me are nurses, um, there are always going to be a need for nurses, doctors. Um, so that financial security is like where you're going to have a set of money that, you know, you, that will protect you in the long run. As in, if there's an unexpected uh, finance, like, oh, my car is broken, you have money to fix it right away. No problem, no issues, no stress. Um, yeah. The freedom is, I guess, where it comes. Oh, I have so much money. Let's go travel next week. <laughs> let's, let's not worry about work. Let's travel, right? That's kind of like yeah. you do what you want on your terms. Uh, security. Uh, personally, I like security. Um, it's just no, like a peace of mind. It's like okay, I have money. Um, I don't need to worry about like if I need to take off one month of work because may- maybe someone's sick in my family. I don't have to stress or worry about it. I have that money um, and that's my security. Mm-hmm. So, so you prefer security? Right? Uh, everyone's different in their own opinions. Uh, some yeah. people, some people want freedom, um, and that's good. Everyone should have goals. Uh, that's what I believe in. Um, security and freedom are two different things that um, people should strive for. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about yeah. the financial aspect, are those the only two? things like financial freedom and financial security those are the two that are usually go hand in hand or like versus each other or are there more concepts like these i think it's more like personal belief oh there's actually like what what are you saying paula go ahead go ahead paula oh i forgot what i was gonna say (laughs) (laughs) sorry yeah yeah, i think those are goals that i like recommend for people like okay what do you strive for do you want to be do you want to live like paycheck to paycheck do you want to be poor like uh, house poor yeah. just working and pay off your mortgage and go back to work it's 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 up to people i guess and it's just there's ways to get out of that mm-hmm. and one of the one of them is uh live below your means really <laughs> mm-hmm. live yes uh, honestly that's something that's something you need discipline for that, actually, and to know your your the needs versus the wants, right? That's a classic yeah. line. That's a classic line. Something, but we'll go over that a bit when we go and talk about saving money and budget, yeah. budgeting. Um, Paula, like, um, how do you define wealth? Like, what is wealth for you? What is the wealth for me? I actually didn't review. Oh, I just read your outline but, you know it's just for you uh, it's just just for you girl it's just it's just your yeah, opinion what's, what's, yeah what's, what's money money talks uh, what's what's wealth for you what's wealth for you First it's, all, it's very think, personal mm-hmm. <laughs> money is powerful let's say that and they might say that money can't buy happiness but let's be honest really like i'm pretty sure there's people who are like stressing out because they don't have food like they don't they can buy food for their children right so it's not really about I don't know like being like rich kind of thing I guess for me it's being to live comfortably um you can live a simple life but still be happy and you don't need like material things but if you have lots of money to buy those material things then why not right like I don't know I I think it's just up to you how much money you have and stuff like that and how much you want to spend those money. You can help people. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You can travel. You can save it for your future and stuff like that. So I don't know. Yeah. That's pretty much everything. And it varies from person to person. But how about you, Henry? Like, what is wealth for you? Well, for me? Mm-hmm. Um, well, my goal is security, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, um, recently I bought a PS5. <laughs> <laughs> We all know it, that. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a need, but it's a, it was a want. Of course, but, um, yeah. It was something that I could afford. It's not going to put me behind. Uh, I had enough in my savings. So mm-hmm. even if my, let's say my car breaks down or my water tank breaks, I still had enough money to fix it. And that's where we'll get into like the strategies, right? And savings and everything for, for your followers, Marjola. <laughs> for, uh, for everyone, for everyone. For everyone. 
Yes, for every. Yeah, for me, what really stood out for me for Walt, it could be anything like health, health finance, as well. health your, that, yeah. yeah, your friends. For me, it's it's yeah. it's every area of my life. Oh, but, um, okay, okay. Yeah, go, 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 go. What, what's I, up? I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really say what my Walt is. I said security, yeah, whatever. But, well, <laughs> Redeem yourself. Redeem yourself. <laughs> what kind of wealth? I want to redeem myself. Let's go back. <laughs> you're, you're, Marjola, you're a hundred percent right. Wealth is so, is so much more than just money. It's like it's a lot of things. It's just not money. Yeah. If you want, if you want, if I, if I was gonna picture a perfect life, it would be. What would it be? Like a, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, number one, being healthy, obviously, because really, if you. If you're sick, you really can't do anything, right? And yeah, number two. Yeah. Family. Mm-hmm. I think I think yeah. Wealth is just this aspect of everything, a part of your life. You want you want the closest friends. To yeah. You, you yeah. want to be healthy. You wanna you wanna travel yeah. or whatever your ambitions are. The you know goals. You want to be happy at your workplace, correct? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like it's a combination of everything. That's what yeah. wealth is. Yeah. I, and I'm not gonna lie, money does uh, help. It does. I mean, it's not everything, but yeah. it does help support. Honestly, a lot of it does. Yeah. Help. yeah. Honestly, like my dream, guys, is to be wealthy so I can give. Because I think for me, that's the purpose of wealth is to, for me to accumulate wealth to help other people yeah. to uh, create opportunities for them. So yeah, that's that's my take on it. Yeah, but guys super duper good answers oh my gosh but uh going to the next question yeah, not um, like well not like well hmm? Hmm? what oh no go ahead no, <laughs> what no, were no, you saying because you were like lagging i forgot what i said <laughs> that's fine girl. oh sorry i was gonna say like oh wait, i forgot what i was gonna say next question <laughs> okay when you remember <laughs> just just tell us okay okay next question so you know what guys i honestly admire you for going to work and then also studying like nursing school is no joke it's so hard but you were able you were able to balance you were able to balance both working and um studying um and at an early age you started working um how old were you guys when you started working uh, I was 16 when I started working. Oh, 50? Oh, wait. Am I lagging? Am I lagging? You're good. You're good. I'm good. Uh, I was, I think I'm pretty sure I was 16 when I started working. Oh, it was yeah. 2011. So, wow. yeah, yeah, since then I've been working. As um, a? Okay, I first started at a restaurant. I was a hostess. And I've been, I worked there for like five years. And I think I'm mostly in the restaurant industry uh, until I was I became a nurse. Mm-hmm. How about you, Henry? I was uh, I believe 15 and a half or 16. Very uh, young, guys. I was yeah. We start I guess me and Paula started young because our, our family kind of I mean I never grew up with money so I wanted to yeah. work. Uh, so yeah. I, I actually started with my dad's company uh, like the one that he works for, and I was like cleaning walls and uh, like doing the cleaning cleaning a bunch of stuff and just like not very laborious jobs i would say yeah mm-hmm. yeah so that well it's so hard working you know what i wish i were <clears throat> sorry i wish i worked earlier cuz my my parents are too overprotective <laughs> excuse me i didn't work till probably when i was can year university or something or i didn't get a job but yeah um, like managing your money at an early age like what did you gain or what did you learn from that starting er- working early like what what is the main thing that you took away from that it's actually recommended that um that people should get a part-time job like like not a lot crazy like 16 hours a week kind of thing you know or even less or yeah but uh what 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 we gain is management time management exactly and uh, learning how to handle your money, but not really, because there's not really an instruction what to do with your money. You That's kinda true. Kind of just like either you spend it, or you save it, right? <laughs> how does it go for you, Paula? Like, what did you learn managing your managing your own money, or like I working? I definitely your- did not. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Wait, I think one of my mistakes uh, on my teenager years or whatever, like 18 to 20 or 16 to 20 or whatever, was I was spending a lot uh, going out. Um, I think mostly going out. I don't know where, where my money went. Mm-hmm. I helped my family though. My goal was like, because I came here in Canada when I was 15. And I was like, okay, I want to work when I when I can and help my family, right? And not ask money for them. Because like Henry said, we also, I also didn't grow up with money. We I didn't ask for money from my parents, no allowance or whatnot. So I was like, I'll work for myself and stuff like that. I'll pay for everything uh, that I want and need. So uh, regrets, I didn't say much. Mm-hmm. Well, from what I see, you guys learned like, to be stronger like like Henry said time management and I guess like managing the stress of school and like um working um also I guess you guys are pretty outgoing and you you just know how to work with people and I think that's something that that is (laughs) that's really good because you know you're you're always and you're always gonna work with people no matter where you go so that's really an important skill and, and to be genuine in them, in your relationships, that's very important. And yeah, thankful for you guys. On to the next. Action. <laughs> so and we're guys, back. <laughs> yeah. Welcome guys, to our channel. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> so guys, like, why is it important to educate yourself about money? I know you guys touched up on it a little bit a while ago, but could you guys tell us more about financial literacy and how important it is to know more about it. All right, Paul, what's your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. I'll go play for that. Um, why it's important is in my first, um, my intro, I was saying that, you know, I didn't know much. There's so many strategies and options out there. So it's, it's nice to learn these things so you understand these terms. So you have first of all you're not going to get cheated on by the banks or whatever uh second you have options options is important like would you not want to know this option versus this option and then compare them and then you pick the one that's best for you if you only know one way you're only going that one way (laughs) Uh, so that's pretty Mm -hmm. much why i think financial literacy is important and um what's the other question marjola i can't remember what you asked Mm, i think that's i think you answered it (laughs) Okay, cool. Unless you have something other than to say. Um, no, it's just, it's just, it's every day in our lives. True. As like, all you probably know is your checkings and savings account. <laughs> exactly. And and we, were not, we were not taught this in school. Right? No, we're not. Yeah, yet. we were. Oh. And it's, you know, they should, yeah. they should definitely add like, you know, like a little course about it, if anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I like like I a real think, life. Yeah. Like I didn't. I'm not yeah. using calculus or pre-cal in my nursing degree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, your turn, Paula. Uh, I think you pretty much said it. Uh, there's actually a lot of things that we really need to know. We only know how to work, pay for your bills, save and work again that's pretty much what we know about our money right it's like a cycle of working paying your bill saving a little bit and all that stuff so go ahead henry that's funny because that's funny exactly you only only know how to pay your bills you pay your bills but then people only know they have credit so they get into debt right Mm -hmm. so like it's it's funny how they associate with each other say oh i have good credit so that means um, i could afford more stuff but then you get the Mm -hmm. bigger debt and that's that's not what we want, but a lot of people get get into that bad habit, and it's mm-hmm. it's a downward spiral. Spiral. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly, and to know that there are options out there suited for your own goals, your own interests, your own liking, and and to know yeah. that, um, I I did a mistake like last year. I know Henry knows this. I I didn't educate myself enough. I I thought I went to sessions. I thought I I knew it, but like never like choosing your insurance you have to know what it really Mm -hmm. is about and what services it does like yeah i remember what kuya aldrin said like start your insurance the right way 
like the first time, right? So better like when choosing products or choosing whatever investments you're gonna, mm-hmm. uh, you have to educate yourself to make that decision, that right decision for, for your finance and for your yeah. future, right? So it's really good to really know what is out there. Exactly, yeah. like Margella, like like how how bad was your stress and headache when we were when you, you were just you, <laughs> you, you give an so, example. Was it expensive? You, um, it was. There are other other lower options there. Yeah, and I didn't know. I thought that was the norm. Apparently, that life insurance is like kind of like branded or like it's not suited to my goal and stuff. So, yeah. Um. So yeah. during your yeah. educational sessions. Like, I don't know if Paula started doing this, if you started shadowing um, your um, organization. Um, what are the common questions do you get during your educational sessions? Like, educational sessions. We attend a lot of sessions, though. Uh, like, for, for like, let's like say you're meeting with a client, I mean. Um, you're meet, meeting with a client during your um, meetings? Depends on their goal because actually our first meeting with a client is uh, present to them what we can what we offer and we talk about like what else do we talk about? Like savings, buying a house, mm-hmm. investing and stuff like that. So, And then we would ask them questions on our second meeting like what are your goals? Do you want to buy a house? Do you, uh, is your goal like buy a car, save money, et cetera, like that. So we work with them. You know, we don't try to like just um, sell and sell and sell something that they don't need. Um, so we we work with them pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so what Paul is saying is that we look at the holistic picture. We, we think about their, like, what's your goals? Like, do you plan on to retire? Everyone needs to retire, correct? Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, so what's the ideal amount to retire with what's your mm-hmm. ideal amount how much do you need um and when do you want to retire it's like yeah. so these are the like important milestones that you need to to address mm-hmm. those things. and like what paula said oh, are you buying a house or are you, are you just going to rent for your life or are you just going to yeah. live in a basement all of your life right it's like what are your goals <laughs> and you need to have a goal yeah yeah everyone's okay. different and then everyone yeah. has their own pace and steps so it's, 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 it's awesome that me and Paula are into this just because uh, we work with so many different clientele and it's just like, and then we just address every need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. And I can really see how passionate you guys are, Henry, as well. Like, congratulations on your license, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, Paula's on the way, hopefully. <laughs> oh, she so, will. Yeah, me. She will, for sure. So it's good. Um, let's go on to saving now. Um, unless you guys have any questions to each other, I don't know much about this stuff, but or anything to add before we go. Oh, for sure. So I guess we're getting to the topic of savings, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So savings. First of all, do you have any debts? That's the first question. Do you have any debts besides your mortgage? Um, let's let's say credit card debts, right? Um, let's say you have tons of tons of credit card debts and you owe whatever bills. Uh, it's it's important to budget. Um, mm-hmm. When you budget, it allows you to um, see how much you have left after all your bills, all the expenses you have. So it's nice to see how much you have left in that cash flow um, to see what you could, you know, pay off your debts first. We can't save without paying off your debts first because mm-hmm. if you're saving, you're gonna have to pay your interest. So it's important to pay your debts first. So then once you have that done, all your savings is yours and not your creditors, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, just so, just in case people don't know exactly, like what, can you define what interest is? Oh, sure. Interest is like the money that you pay them that because you're le- they're lending you money because you don't have that money. So the, um, they're lending you that money and they get a certain percentage back. Is that like commission, right? It's, it's not something not like, technically something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, it's like you know, they, like they're not going to lend you money for free. Yeah, that, they uh, need to earn. Yeah, they're in the business of making money. Banks are in mm-hmm. the business of making money, so they're going to give you the money, but you know, you're going to have to pay them something for that money. Yeah. 
if that makes sense, right? That makes sense? <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So, um, what, so budgeting, you mentioned about that. I, I put here, planning your future spending is to analyze where your current spending is going, calculate how much you'd like to save each month and decide where to cut your spending. And it's hard, right? I, I did mention this. Um, how do you guys budget? Um, do you do you have a list allotted mo- um, monthly? You save first, and then you spend the rest, or how how do you guys budget? Uh, I think Paula should take this one. She actually has experience in it, so maybe Paula can go through her experience, uh, and then mm-hmm. she can tell you how she did all these things. Oh yeah. Okay. So two years ago, like I said, when I met uh, our financial advisors, who's our mentor now? Uh, we started with budgeting plan. Um, it's an Excel sheet. The, the, it's 100% free. Um, they just helped me through it. Um, paying off like, there's an Excel sheet where it says your fixed, um, fixed which one, expenses. And then obviously your last one are your like lifestyle or whatever, be happy, whatever stuff. And then your savings. And also emergency fund on top of that. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, what it says on my budget planning um, two years ago. Uh, we prioritize paying off debt, like Henry said, because there's a lot of interest. Um, you really want to pay, pay that off first, because I mean, you can save, um, you can still put uh, some savings there after like, well, a little bit of savings, as long as you're paying off your credit card and stuff. I don't know how elaborate you want me to be. <laughs> so, so Paul, you're saying that you made a budget, correct? Yeah. Uh, you saw all you wrote all your expenses down monthly, and then obviously you have your your um, income, and then um, I guess you ex- subtracted all, and you had a certain amount. You yeah. were money towards an emergency emergency fund yeah. as well, so which is like savings. Um, yeah. And then you also put a lot of money into your uh, debt. Yes, mostly um, debt. So we did a uh, debt management actually for mine uh, when I met my advisors. Uh, which one is this? I, if I could show you the Excel sheet, so, you so will probably I, I could probably explain it more. Is it super like simple? Bit, but but uh, how much debt did you have? Oh shit! <laughs> so just 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 so everyone everyone knows how much how much you got rid of that debt in how many oh my months. God. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. First, my majority one was the student loan. I think everyone here can relate. Yeah. It was four, 14,000. Uh, that was the federal. And I had, I think, four grand for credit cards because I had three. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Excuse my profanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so you had um, 18, about 18,000 or more? Yeah, 18, oh, 18 in total. Uh, that's only federal though because I still have my provincial which is like no interest so I don't um, let's forget about that uh, let's focus on the credit cards we focus on the credit cards because most of them are 20% interest that's a lot of money right um, every month um, if you're just paying off minimum because I was only paying off minimum I was a student that was a mistake I'm sorry <laughs> now you know, now you know. <laughs> now I know. that was two years ago we're brand new <laughs> Okay, so we started off uh, with the highest. I think it was the highest um, credit card. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was the highest one. Is that how it works, the snowball one? So, yeah. So, there's actually two ways to um, to pay off your debts. Um, I think you, well, if you attack your highest interest rate first, uh, it's, called right. the, uh, it's called the avalanche method. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so, you attack the highest interest rate. It's mathematically correct, um, but it's hard to do psychologically. It's mm-hmm. like, when am I gonna be done this? Am I? Mm-hmm. How many more payments do I need? So it's hard. So and then Paul was saying that I was saying there's two methods. So that's the avalanche method, and there's the snowball effect. The, the snowball effect is you take on the lowest lowest um, loan first. So you let's say you have three credit cards. Paula owes one hundred dollars, five hundred, and one thousand on the other one. So you would mm-hmm. attack the hundred dollar one first, get rid of that, make make minimum payments for the rest. Then uh, once that hundred dollars is done, cut that card up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you uh, attack the next credit card, uh, which is the five hundred dollar loan. Uh, then you cut, you know, finish that, and then you go on to the next one. 
so that's a snowball effect it's not mm-hmm. mathematically correct but mm-hmm. it's, it's more psychologically so it's like okay you get one you get rid of one okay two more to go oh i got rid of mm-hmm. two one more to go mm-hmm. uh, versus the avalanche effect is um it's gonna take you a while but you know you're saving more but it's gonna take a lot like it should take about the same amount but it's just, it's just it's just the 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 feeling psychologically you're like oh this is mentally draining because you you're making these payments but you still have this huge uh, uh loan yeah um uh, most credit cards have 20 percent interest right am i correct like most even most, just the most right um actually my advisor um patricia actually told me that there's actually lower interest so she talked to me um two years ago she's like you should call the bank and ask for a lower interest credit card because there's actually one. There's actually some. So I was with RBC. Um, I asked for a lower interest credit card. It was only 13%. I mean, 20% versus 13%, you're good, right? If you don't really need the, the credit card or whatever, I was, it was only like a $2,000 credit limit. I mean, if you're still a student, you don't need that much. Well, you shouldn't need that much from your credit card. <laughs> I mean, don't be like me i mean sometimes you need credit cards right but yeah yeah good, that's good, true like, call your bank get a lower interest rate credit card yeah um, that would mm-hmm. definitely help in the long run and um i mean don't get me wrong credit cards are good mm-hmm. you know they yeah. help build credit but you have to be responsible <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and don't get like uh distracted from like their offers like a rewards card etc etc like that yeah. don't don't believe in those although i have a rewards card only have one credit card yeah i went down is it the traveling one huh is it the traveling one uh it's the rbc rewards you can use it for traveling and other stuff yeah yeah exactly yeah just use one (laughs) wow and it's definitely discipline and like the mindset like it feels like you're working out and just you know just keep going until you pay off the debt like if you have debt debt though and it's zero interest do you guys recommend to pay it right away regardless oh that's a good question so a lot of car companies like let's say car let's use car companies for example zero interest right when you buy a brand new car um do i recommend paying that off first I guess it depends on you. For me personally, Henry's really good at that. Personally, I don't like debt. Yeah. Um, yeah. But and cars also depreciate, right? So yeah, it's, it's eh. <laughs> yeah. There's such Henry, a- okay. Henry already paid off his car, so like, right? The, the Nissan one or whatever. He hates that. that. What? Oh, I, I yeah, I paid off one car, but that's uh, yeah. I had it during school, so. I couldn't um, make uh, huge lump sum payments, uh, but then it was zero percent, and um, mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, it was it was a pretty good deal. I mean, it's not totally one percent. It was like zero point nine. A lot of companies advertise zero percent, but it's actually zero point nine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess it depends on. There's such thing. I think I read here. There's such thing as a good debt and um, bad debt. So, oh yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah, if if you're gonna invest on, let's say. I, I know this is like going outside, like let's say a business. I don't even know if it's a good idea to invest, get debt to fund the business, but there is such a thing. I need to look over the stuff, but there is such a thing as good debt and bad debt too. Yeah, this, this is where actually... Um, I think Henry knows that. Yeah. Do you know Henry? Can you expand on that? Like, like what are you talking about? Which one? Good, uh, good debt, good debt, good and, debt bad. and bad debt. Personally, like, uh, let me you clarify. That. What what I pay, let me clarify the one answer. Would I pay off my car loan first? Yes, I would, because any debt is for me personally is bad debt. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to have anything. I don't want to owe True. banks. I don't want to owe True. creditors. It's just like, okay, well, this is my money. I'm gonna keep my, most of that money to myself. If this, mm-hmm. That's my personal belief. Um, it's like bad debt versus good debt. If we if we save enough money, you're gonna have. This is where I mentioned about options and opportunities. If you save enough, you're going to have uh, a lot of money to get into these business uh, um, ventures and everything because you have enough money for your family saved up and all, all these extra uh, money that you're saving could go towards the business. But it's, it's, it's hard because you have the opportunity right in front of you and then you're like, 
okay, should I get a loan so I, mm-hmm. I can go all in, mm-hmm. right? That's well, up true. to you. I personally don't want that. It's like, mm-hmm. let's say back in 2016, me and Paula were still students and Bitcoin was still new. <laughs> mm-hmm. let's, let's, let's talk about it. Now, let's say people were like, oh, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin in 2016. But we, me and Paula, we're, you know, we're in school. We have debt. Uh, will we do it? No, we're not going to nope. jeopardize our security, our, our, um, yeah, our finance for, for an investment. Until you yeah. have enough money saved up, then you can start investing. So it's about building your foundation first before you invest or, or venture out. Just make sure exactly. your foundation is strong. Your foundation has to be strong. Mm-hmm. You're not going to build a skyscraper with a house yeah. foundation, right? You, you need a big foundation for that kind of stuff. Mm, some good stuff we got cooking here. I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, so like saving money, I think really, it's more thinking of the long term. Um, some of the things, I guess, that is still far ahead of us, but something very important is pension. Um, can you tell us more about pension, guys? <laughs> if you guys know. Um, pension. Yeah, there's usually about there's two, two types, types of, right? Yeah, yeah types two of types of pension. of pension. Um, one is called defined contribution, Fine. and one's uh, what's the other one? Defined contribution. This defined is Canadian, benefit. guys. Huh? Canadian defined benefit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. uh, one of them will pay you dep- depending on. You could, if you don't have a company that gives you a pension, you yeah. could uh, go seek out an advisor who will make a plan for you to have a, like a retirement savings. Mm-hmm. Uh, pensions, let's say Margella, Paula, and I are nurses. Well, we have a, a, a defined benefit uh, plan. Defined benefit. Is it benefit? Uh, yes, it is. Because we, okay. we're, we're going to get an X amount of, uh, let's say when we retire, we're going to get an X amount of money, a fixed X amount of money per mm-hmm. month until we die um the other one is the contribution one so let's say your salary is uh fifty thousand dollars your your employer will match let's say x ten percent of your contribution so let's say you put ten thousand in um and then your employer will match that with ten percent so they'll put a thousand so that that's depending on the company right some companies will put in more some companies companies will put less um but in the, yeah that's pretty much what pensions are yeah when you retire they only give you a set amount but is is every pension equal no they're not so you're, you definitely have to be on top of that ball when you retire because if you think you're gonna put money in that pension and that's enough to supply you for your retirement you're gonna have to think twice because that's mm-hmm. that's not enough <laughs> yeah, inflation you know like things just get expensive over time and when you're older who knows like twenty dollars is one dollar or maybe more yeah. who yeah. knows yeah. right inflation for sure mm-hmm. so yeah i know what like we're nurses i think one of our struggles is like our tax taxes like how how can we trim taxes and there's this thing called rrsp right guys is that 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 one of the things that can lower down our taxes our tax yep rrsp um business if you have a business for sure that can help a lot um, what else, Henry? Other than RSP and having a business. Um, so if you're self-employed, if you have a business license, uh, yeah. you, have, you could actually file some stuff that you buy as expenses. Mm-hmm. Um, and like what Marjorie said, RRSPs. So that's the Registered Retirement Savings Plan. A lot of people will put money in there, not knowing what it's for. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess when you hear the the word uh, retirement, you think, okay, this is for my retirement. I'm going to put tons of money in there and I'm going to retire rich. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, go ahead, Paul. What is it for? What is it for, Paul? Oh, Hi, girl. <laughs> you can use it for a first time home buyer. Yes. Uh, Good. But no, that's not the answer I was looking for. I know. What is it? <laughs> you use it? I, I gave it away. You can use it as a tax deduction. Yes. Tax so, deduction. Yeah. Just yeah. take note. Yeah. When you, because when you, the, take out your money from RSP like when you retire it's a lot of tasks so make sure you have another savings right there yeah so like look like i like to take advantage of it let's say yeah let's say you're an independent person you you and then every year income tax comes around and let's say you owe money 
and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, why do I owe like X amount of money every single year? You could actually contribute in your RRSP. Mm-hmm. It's a registered uh, like account. So then um, CRA, the Canada Revenue Agency, will actually uh, see how much you put in contribution in your RRSP and then mm-hmm. they'll deduct that off your total income from what you actually made that year. So instead of saying, let's say I made $55,000, they're going to treat me as I made $55,000. If I didn't put anything in RRS, mm-hmm. RRS by the way, they'll treat me as $55,000 uh, that I made this year, uh, and then they'll tax me for it. But if I put, fi- let's say I put $5,000 in, let's say, let's pretend that if I put $5,000 in, I'll, I'll lower my tax bracket. I'll have, mm-hmm. then a CRA will be like, okay, he actually made only $50,000 in, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll actually give him some money back because he's uh under the tax bracket or d- depending right whatever but at least you're not paying the government versus you're actually putting that five thousand dollars back into your own back into your yes yeah. so guys oh my gosh really? you don't need me here henry can explain everything no paula no, we, see you. we need you paula we need you <laughs> yeah. you, 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 have, you have that experience paula yeah exactly so are you guys comfortable in moving into investments now? Do you need to say anything else from the Yes, saving? yes. So investments. There's one, thing, there's one thing we haven't touched on is, uh, is having an emergency fund. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. I forgot. Yes. So, How uh, much would it be for emergency ooh, funds? Good question. Percentage? Three to six months of your um, salary. Mm-hmm. You need to save three to six months of your salary for that. Then the so net, right now, <laughs> the net of your salary. Yeah, the net. I mean, if you want growth, like, no, I think not. okay. No, yes, of course. Net, net. It's about three to six months of your income, so mm-hmm. that's gonna cover you for should cover you for like big repairs or unexpected expenses, right? Yeah, like that mortgage. Be, yeah. If it gets big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what like the benefit of having an emergency fund is that you don't touch your investment. Mm-hmm. Your investment is supposed to grow without you. Yeah. So you. Mm-hmm. you don't touch your CFSA, RSP, or anything like that. Anything, just emergency fund is just for emergency. Okay, so emergency mm-hmm. fund and then TFSA and then our, those those are different funds. Like there's emergency funds and there's uh, there are investment funds. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. really well, different. Uh, other kinds product. of saving oh, yeah oh. yeah yeah but your emergency fund is for your emergency right yeah technically it's, it's actually your saving mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But, but don't don't touch it once you have don't it. touch it yeah. yeah and then if you want to save for travels then you can save for travels in a different saving. Um, yes something else so savings is like a lot it it, it, it the definition of it is like a lot because it depends on your goals exactly yeah oh that's so Good. I can't. I can't stop. Until the next. the next. I don't know anything um, um, about this, like investments, guys. Mm, Take me away. Take us away. Like investments. What are the basics in this? Um... Investing is is a is a hard. It's a hard topic. It's a hard one. Oh, it is hard. hard. Just, skip Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this, this, is the, this is the topic that you know, Marjella wants to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 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 okay. okay. The basic, what's the basic of investing? Pretty much it's like money going for you, for you, like passive. Passive, is that correct? Yeah. So there's there's three ways to accumulate wealth, right? There's, yes. There's, what is it, Paula? You should know that. <laughs> Shit, I just know your, oh, real estate? Yeah. Business? Business? Yeah. Business is the third one. Go, Henry. And then the last <laughs> one that Paula didn't mention is paper assets. Okay. So paper oh, assets yeah, paper is, your, is, is your stocks, your, uh, I guess, Forex, if you want to put it in there. Yeah, that's when it gets more a little bit more complicated because you need to do a lot of research there's, about those stuff. There's a lot of things that go in, um, but if mm-hmm. you really want to get, if you want to touch your toes in, uh, definitely see an advisor where it's like, <laughs> He'll explain everything to you. Um, mutual funds is a very simple, easy to understand and uh, to get started. Um, you can also go through mutual funds with your banks as well, mm-hmm. um, but they won't give you the best rates. They'll give you mm-hmm. they'll give you a piece, but not the best. 
Uh, unless you see me and Paula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have to see us. Call me. <laughs> so, but, but there's a uh, in, in in the papers assets world. Um, there's your like ETFs, mutual funds, segregated funds. Um, like just what else is there? Yeah, that's that's, that's about it. That's like so. What these are is um multiple stocks that are di- diversified into one portfolio that someone runs. Mm-hmm. 